Hello and welcome to our service from Alba Baptist Church. I'm Terry Smith, the pastor there, and it's lovely to welcome you to our service today. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Next week, we're into December. Wow, the months have gone by so fast, haven't they? And still things are uncertain for the future. We're not sure what will happen at Christmas time. But we will be doing our Christmas Day lunches. If possible, if it'll be safe, we'll have them together. But if not, then we'll do a doorstep delivery as we did last year. Please give us information about people who'd be living alone and would love to have a Christmas Day lunch. Please let us know their details. Thank you. Our service today, our songs are going to be led by Dave and Carolyn. The words are up on the screen, so do sing along at home with us. Our prayers today are being led by Mike and by Dave. Our Bible readings are by Carolyn and Elizabeth. Our meditations today, the first Sunday in Advent, concern preparing the way. Jesus is coming. And stay alert. Jesus is coming back. For those of you who are hard of hearing, there are subtitles. Just click on the icon at the bottom right of your screen. Well, here we are in Advent and we're starting in darkness, aren't we? Refugees risking their lives, losing their lives to get to the UK. Others dying of cold on the Belarus-Polish border. Our brothers and sisters persecuted for following Jesus in North Korea, in China, in India, in the Middle East and North Africa. Everyone suffering in Afghanistan. So much darkness. And so at Advent we light a candle. Jesus, the King who is coming, is coming to bring light into the world and hope and life and purpose. Because he is a God of love and compassion. And 2 Corinthians 4.6 in the Amplified Version tells us more. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, is the one who has shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory and the majesty of God, clearly revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Loving Father, thank you for your creation plan. Your plan to have a world of light. Your word commanded, let there be light. Thank you that you sent that word to come and be the light of this dark world. Thank you that the light is shining brightly in these dark days. Thank you that the light shines in our hearts so that we can be that light to the world day by day. Please bless us this Advent time. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we get ready and we stay alert, because the King is coming. Amen. We'll sing to worship songs now as we begin our service. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. So here I am to worship. And then, and he shall reign. The Son of Man is coming with the clouds of heaven. Every nation, tribe and tongue worship him on bended knee. After that, Mick's going to lead us in prayer. Together worthy, all together wonderful. 
Father, we come to you this morning to worship you and to thank you for all that you are to us and for the way in which you sustain us. We thank you most of all for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. 
to pay the price of our sin. And we thank you, Lord, that you have brought us to know him and that in knowing him we look forward to life eternal and life here in this world, in your presence, guided by your spirit, watched over by your own person. You are the one who never sleeps. You are the one whose presence spans the whole scope of your world so that wherever we are, we can never be away from you. And we worship you for this, Lord. We worship you for this this morning, knowing that with all that's been going on in our lives over these past days, we have not been away from you. And our lives have not been without your scope to influence them. And we bless you, Lord, for every moment of our days when you have come into our lives and, Lord, spoken to us, spoken with us, listened to our cry, listened to our prayer, observed our needs, and, Lord, met with us in the way that only you can do. And so we come to you on this Sabbath morning to worship you and to thank you for the God that you are, that unlike any other forces in our world, you are the one who never changes. You are always the same. And your judgments today are as they were yesterday. And they have not been altered or made to alter. And so, Lord, we thank you that we are able to rely on you, unchangeable God, in these days of constant, regular, and quite frankly, boring change sometimes. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to reveal yourself in your world and show yourself to your people, the church, and, Lord, enable your church to speak of you to those in need. We will remember them today, Lord, and their names and their faces flash before us now. We bring them and ourselves to you. We pray, Lord, that you will meet with us and bless us with your presence and the sound of your voice. Lord, may you be pleased to hear and to receive our worship today, for we bring it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This reading is taken from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Vituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Shall we pray together? Father, this Advent time, we want to get ready, to be alert, to be ready to accept the Lord Jesus into our lives, to reign there. Father, please fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Imagine a catastrophe is going to hit your community. And there's a warning out. Look, there's a flood coming, folks. Make sure that all your valuables are taken upstairs. Get ready. Trouble is coming. There's a crisis. 
there's a crisis going on at the time when John the Baptist breaks into the scene here. What was that crisis? And how would being plunged into the Jordan help? Well, the names given at the start of this reading give us some indication not only of the date, but of the situation at the time. There was oppression, there was misery, there was a build-up of feeling of trouble that disaster was coming. Well, what do these names tell us about the date? The Romans had been ruling Israel for over a hundred years, and things were getting worse. In AD 6, the Romans had sent a resident governor to live in that region. He was partly at Caesarea and partly at Jerusalem. This man, this governor, was Pilate, and he was cruel, and he was vindictive, and he was bloodthirsty. A terrible man. In AD 14, Augustus, the first emperor, had died, and he'd been replaced by Tiberius, and he was a ruthless man. He was expecting people to worship him as God. In the north of the kingdom of Israel, Herod's sons Antipas and Philip were each ruling an area. But they were ruthless too, and they ruled by fear and oppression. And nobody liked them. They were of Edomite extraction anyway. They weren't pure Jews. So there was real horror and resentment for their impact on society. Furthermore, the high priests, well, there should only have been one high priest, shouldn't there? That's, that's how the system should have worked. But as a result of Roman intrigue, between 36 BC and 26 AD, there were 28 high priests. Usually someone was high priest until they died. It should have been Annas here. But because of the Roman interference, his son-in-law Caiaphas was a high priest too. The high priests were collaborators with Rome. They wanted to maintain their status, maintain their position, their authority in the country. And so they just pacified the Romans and did what they wanted. What a crisis was building up here. And devout Jews were looking for God, hoping to hear from him, wanting to come out of slavery again. They remembered they'd been slaves in Egypt all those centuries ago. And then again, they'd been taken off into exile in Babylon. They'd had times of slavery, but here now they were slaves in their own country. And they wanted to get out of this slavery again. Their old prophets had spoken about the time of renewal, that there would be a new freedom. They could look forward to this. And what the prophets had told them is that God himself would visit them. But they had no idea of what that would be like. So here then is the crisis. There's Roman rule. There are Edomite kings. There are unfaithful, disloyal, seditious priests. The country needs a rescue. They need urgent action. They've got to respond. They've got to do something. And at this point, John arrives on the scene. He's a fiery prophet. He comes from a priestly family, so he's like the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel, isn't he? He was a priest. And then John comes in from the wilderness, and he goes round to the towns and the villages, and he's preaching, the time has come, the kingdom is coming. So the people were ready and eager to listen thinking of all their background, thinking of the pressures that's on them. They're ready for something to happen. And what John is doing is baptizing people. He's plunging them into the River Jordan. Why is he doing that? What's the point of that? It's a powerful symbol of new life. But why? Well, do you remember when the people were slaves in Egypt? What had God done? God had led them out of Egypt through the Red Sea. He led them through the wilderness. And then he led them through the River Jordan. 
They'd come through the Jordan to get to the new life. And they remembered this every year, didn't they, when they had the Passover and the other festivals. They're remembering the new life that God has given them by coming through the River Jordan. So, here they were then, John challenging them, saying, come on, repent, be baptized, go through the Jordan again to get to this new life. But why were they in slavery in the first place? Again, it was the old prophets who told them. They said, it's because you're worshipping idols, because you've turned away from worshipping the one true God. Where are your hearts now? Are your hearts orientated towards the Lord God? Therefore, the way to escape slavery, the way to get freedom, the way to start a new life is to return to God. Return with all your heart and soul. That's what John was saying. Turn around, repent. Malachi, the latest of their prophets, had told them, Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord God. And so that was John's agenda. He was baptizing people who were repenting of their sins and wanting God's forgiveness, wanting to be cleansed, wanting the washing to start a new life. That's why they were ready to go into the Jordan. And John was doing what Isaiah foretold. He was preparing the way for the Lord himself to come to his people. This is the time, he's saying. Rescue is coming. Take action now. When a king was going to visit a domain of his, he would send a courier in advance to prepare the way, to get the roads smooth and easy to travel over. John wants to prepare the hearts, prepare the lives of people so that Jesus can come in. Is your life ready for the king to come? At that time, the people were expecting the Messiah to be a warrior king. They weren't expecting a glorious, completely human Messiah, one who would love and care and help and heal as well as challenge those who thought their religion was good enough. The self-satisfied religious people had to come on side with God's rescue plan. They too had to lay aside their preconceptions and in humility and in sincerity accept him into their lives. Here we are in Advent. Advent, that time of celebrating the coming of Jesus. And the message is, get ready, prepare the way. Is there anything you need to repent of in your personal life? In your relationship with God? In your work life? In your family life? your social life, your finances? Are you giving to God what you should? Is any barrier to the Lord Jesus occupying every part of your life there? Confess it. Repent, that means turn around from it. Leave it behind you. Know his forgiveness. Be ready for him to come. Make way for him to come. Make the road straight for him. And then, then you'll see God's rescue. He comes, the broken hearts to heal, the prisoners to free. Are you a prisoner? Are you a prisoner of fear or guilt or resentment? He comes to free the prisoner. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. And that's our next song. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendour arrives. And after we've sung that, Dave's going to lead us in prayer.
Father, we come to you again today with thanks, first of all. Thank you for the success of the UK's vaccination rollout. Yes, there are still some who are reluctant, but in the main, this has been very successful. And it does appear to be keeping the virus at bay, especially when we look at other countries, even in Europe. COVID now sweeping across European nations. We're puzzled at the way the antivirus campaigners fight against having the vaccination without apparent consideration of their own health or the effect that it is likely to have on others. And their hospitals are struggling to cope with the situation. Though there are relatively fewer in the UK, our own hospitals are still inundated with the backlog of people having to have major operations, but also a backlog of people who have avoided going to the doctors and the hospitals because of the situation with the virus itself. We pray for our NHS struggling with this situation. And we pray for our care staff too, who continue to struggle with limited resources. We pray for our government seemingly caught up in infighting when they ought to be tackling other issues. Those affecting other nations, not just our own nation. Those are affecting international issues, including those poorer countries who do not seem to be getting their fair share of vaccine. There's lots of rhetoric about this, but the reality is that there are so few people being vaccinated. And we know until everyone is protected, then realistically, no one is protected. We continue to remember those countries who are starving, population starving, those who are suffering conflict and war. And all the time we remember it's the children who suffer this most. So we bring them to you this morning, Father. We think of all of the migrants desperate to get to the UK, risking everything. It must be so difficult from where they're coming from that they would risk their lives so much just to get to the UK. We ask you for help for these people. We ask you, Father, show us what we can do about it. We ask for wisdom for us and for our leaders. And as we approach this very special time, we, we wonder what sort of Christmas many of these people are going to have. So once again, we, we bring them to you today. We have it so easy in the UK. We never have to face these difficulties. We see them in the news and on the TV and we almost become immune to the reality of those situations. Bring those things home to us, Father, especially at this Christmas time, and remind us what we can do to help. And once again, we bring our friends and our families towards you. Thank you for keeping them safe. We pray for them too, as we give you all the glory today. In Jesus' name, Amen. The reading is from Luke chapter 21, starting at verse 25. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable, Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, 
for your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you unexpectedly, like a trap, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, these verses clearly have two main points, don't they? One, Jesus will return to planet Earth. We don't know when. There have been false prophets and there have been heretical sects which have given wrong ideas and wrong predictions about when that date would be. Remember that not even Jesus knew when he would be coming back when he was in human form. But he will return and everyone will see him. Therefore we can be encouraged that history is going somewhere. Unlike others who believe that history is just a confusion, the Stoics believed that history was circular. You went for a thousand or so years in one direction, and then some catastrophe happened and it all started all over again. For Christians, history has a goal. It's Jesus Christ. He'll be Lord of all. And that's all we need to know. And the second main point is that we need to be on the watch. We need to be alert. We need to be ready. We need to live our lives in the constant state of expectation. Live in the light of eternity. Jesus told many parables, didn't he, about being ready. Being ready for when the owner returns, for when the master comes back, for when the bridegroom arrives. Stay alert. Don't get preoccupied with feasting and drinking. Don't get burdened down with all the worries of life. Don't let all the evils of the world become the main focus of your thinking. Instead, pray. Keep in constant touch with your Heavenly Father. He'll give you strength to cope with all that's going to happen in this fallen world. We can think we've got it tough. But think what it was like for the Christians in Jerusalem, just, say, 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. There was a plan to put a vast statue of the Roman emperor in the temple. Think what confusion and anger that caused. Then there was a string of Roman governors, each one more vicious than the last. There were revolutionary movements, the revolutionary leaders arose, but were soon brutally crushed. The priests were secretly involved in deals with the Roman oppressors. The ex-Pharisee Saul, now known as Paul, had visited Jerusalem and caused a riot. Oh, that's what his opponent said. Now he was a prisoner in Rome, and he wouldn't be seen again. Peter and the other apostles had gone on their travels, and they hadn't been heard of for years. The leader of the Jerusalem Christians, James, the half-brother of Jesus himself, he was getting old, and his prayers for the redemption of his people were not being answered. And there were splits in the Christian community, weren't there? Some were saying that Gentiles could become Christians, others saying that they had to become Jewish converts first. They had to keep all the Jewish laws like circumcision. And meanwhile, in addition to all that, their non-Christian friends were ridiculing them. When's this Messiah of yours going to come back then? If he really is the Messiah, why has nothing much happened since he disappeared? If he was the Prince of Peace, as he claimed, why have we got so much violence and bloodshed? The Christians in Jerusalem must have been weary and discouraged. There was no great growth in the church now as there had been in the early days. The fire seemed to have gone out. But they continued faithfully. They met to worship, to pray, to break bread together. They recalled the sayings of Jesus. They retold his stories. They remembered his instructions to hang on, to be alert to pray and not get weary. 
and it's the same for us today. Exciting things are happening in other places, in distant lands, every day. Thousands of people are discovering Jesus and choosing to follow him. That's great news and we rejoice in it. But for us here, there's not an exciting battle with banners flying high and adrenaline flowing. There is the steady tread of prayer and hope and scripture and obedience and witness. Day by day, by day by day, and week by week. This is what counts. This is why patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Read the story again. Remind one another of what Jesus said. Pray. Don't get weary. Encourage one another. Stay alert. Remind each other of the future God has planned for us. And pray. We'll finish by singing the song through days of rage and wonder. We'll pursue the end of time. Through days of rage and wonder, you give us strength to stand and seek a heavenly city not built by human hands. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, we will press on day by day. Let's pray together. Loving Father, thank you for the glorious future that you have planned for us in Jesus. When we get weary and discouraged, please help us to fix our gaze on him, to be aware of your presence with us in every situation, to pray and not faint, and to stay alert to receive your encouragement and your guidance. Amen. Well, we're now in Advent, and so we'll be sending daily reflections out during the weekdays. That's Monday to Friday. We can email them to you if we've got your email address, and they'll also be on the website. Next week, Monday 5.30, we have our prayer meeting, and Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we have our Bible study. Both of those are Zoom meetings, and the link is sent to those on our mailing list. Do let us know if you'd like to be added to that list. We'd love to have you with us. Next Sunday, that'll be the second Sunday in Advent, there'll be a video YouTube service like this one, and the link will be on the website, and again sent to you if you're on our mailing list. Do visit our website, and there you'll find links to past services. You'll find our contact details. Do please phone us or email us if you want to discuss anything, if you've got any questions you want to ask, or if you'd like to tell us something that you want us to pray about. Please do get in touch. And now hear God's blessing before we sing our final song. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and grant you hope and patience and perseverance as you wait for Jesus to come as King. Amen. Days of rage and wonder, we pursue the end of time to seize the day eternal, the reign of the divine, fixing our eyes on Jesus, we will press on day by day. This world's will in pleasures are not our destiny All ancient rites of passage stay love the bread and wine A hope across the towers over the wrecks of
Rest.